Okay, so up to this point, we've done a really nice job showing the composition of our data using charts like columns, pies and donuts, and clustered and stacked bars. Now let's say we want to give some sense of trending as well based on our release date data. So let's go ahead and copy one of our pivots, choose this third one here, select the entire pivot table, control C, and then paste a fourth view down here beneath our stacked bar chart. And in this case, I'm going to update the view quite a bit. So instead of showing the number of titles now, I actually want to see how gross revenue moves. So I'm going to use gross revenue as my values field. And instead of showing the data by genre and rating, I'm going to pull both of those fields out entirely and drag release date into my row labels. So as usual, we get our auto grouping here since Excel has identified this as a date specific field. And in this case, that's a good thing. Um, since the idea here will be to show data rolled up to the year level. Now, if you're using an older version of Excel and your dates don't auto group, you should be able to drill into your pivot table, analyze options, and manually select the group field button here to roll that data up to months and years. And if that doesn't work, you can also pretty easily create new columns in the raw data tab itself using functions like year and month. So in this case, because our dates were auto-grouped, um, we've got quarters, release dates, and years. Let's pull quarters out and release date out so that we're just summarizing gross revenue by year. And now I do have to caveat that this isn't exactly a traditional time series analysis. We're not showing how revenue as a whole has trended over time, but rather the total revenue generated based on the year of each film's release. So for example, since Jurassic Park was released in 1993, all revenue generated by that movie would show up in the 1993 bucket. So even if Jurassic Park generated 10 million in revenue in 1994, all of that revenue is going to get lumped into 1993 since that's the year that Jurassic Park was released. So if we wanted to show a true time series, we would need raw data with multiple observations of revenue over time. Um, but don't worry, we, we do have some great time series data that we'll play with in the final section of the course when we dive into some different case studies. So anyway, now that we have a revenue by release date rolled up to years, let's limit the view to only show the past 20 years or so. So quick pro tip, rather than drilling into our sorting and filtering options and manually selecting 20 or so boxes, there's an easier way to do this. And in the view itself, I can actually just click and drag to select the window that I want. In this case, I want 1995 through 2015. I'll exclude 2016 since that just includes a handful of rows of data. And with this selection in place, it's as simple as right clicking, drilling into filter options here, and keeping only these selected items. Now if I scroll up, I can see that my view has been updated to include just the view that I had selected. So nice little tip there. Um, and from here, we could go ahead and toss a simple line chart on this and call it a day. If we go into our tools, pivot chart, basic line chart. And this is nice. It shows a good little view of how films released more recently have driven considerably more revenue than those released in the 90s, for instance. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and name this pivot table revenue by year. So there we go. But instead of sticking with the line chart, I want an excuse to use my all time favorite chart type, which is the stacked area chart. Now, without going on too much of a tangent, the reason I love area charts is that they pack a ton of information into a really clean, really elegant visualization. So in this case, we can use an area chart to show both trending like we have here, and some sort of composition as well. So to demonstrate this, let's grab our ratings field and drop it into our column labels or legend series options, which will show us if there have been any interesting trends in terms of which types or ratings of films are being produced more or less over time or generating more or less revenue over time. Now, this is already pretty cool. You can already see a story starting to take shape here. Uh, as Excel integrates that data as new lines or new series within our chart. But trust me, an area chart will do an even better job. So since we already have our ratings filtered down to what we need, G, PG, PG13, and R, 
we can head up to our pivot chart tools, design options, and select change chart type from here. And let's turn this bad boy into an area chart. Now the traditional area chart isn't exactly helpful here since our series are overlapping each other, but in this case using a stacked area is a really great way to visualize both how volume as a whole has changed over time, represented by the height of the entire chart, and how the composition or distribution of values has changed as well. So let's hit OK, and we can go ahead into our tools, analyze, get rid of those pesky field buttons, and stretch it out a bit, and voila, we've got ourselves a beautiful stacked area chart.